let's take a look at the different sharing options. So to do that, I'm going to click share near the top right. And then I have a few different options. If I want to include system audio, so maybe I want to place an audio track from my computer or a video from my computer, I'd want to include audio. I can choose the different modes. The one on the left is content only, so whatever I choose to share, that's all they see. But you can also insert yourself. If you're using your webcam, you can do kind of picture-in-picture -picture modes or side-by-side -side modes. So you may be interested in playing around with those. But I'll leave that to you. You do get to choose which screen. If you have more than one screen, you can share either one or as many as you have. You'd pick the one you want. You can choose a specific window. So if you don't want to share your entire screen where they would see anything you pull up on that screen, you could just choose to share the specific application you want. You can share a whiteboard. So if you've pre-created one, as we did in a previous video, you could pull up a pre-created whiteboard or make one on the fly. And the nice thing is with these whiteboards, you can pull in PDFs, you can pull in images, you can let students collaborate together. So it is worth exploring this in more detail. You could just share specifically from a camera if you want. If you have files in PowerPoint or Excel online, you can grab those. You can also just browse your entire OneDrive to find files that you've previously put into there, or even browse your computer. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the difference between, say, sharing a screen. So again, I share my screen. Now, whatever I pull up on this screen will get shared. I've got this little mini window that shows me Teams. So if some student was to turn on their camera, I'd be able to see them. I can actually resize it, and then that would get shown in the video or shown in the stream. So my students would now actually be seeing this. But whatever I pull in, that's what gets shown. And let's say I want to share something like a PowerPoint, probably a pretty common use case. And maybe I'm going to share my presentation. The only problem with doing the share screen is if you only have one screen, I have my presentation open. And I got this little mini view of Teams, but I can't really see things like chat. So if I want to use chat, I might have to log in on a second device. Unless, again, I have a second screen, and it looks like I misspelled presentation. Oops. But either way, it might be trickier to present if you only have one screen. Whereas if you share the PowerPoint instead, and to do the sharing, by the way, I can always hover near the top of my screen, switch to presentation mode. I can do things like give control to someone else in the room. I can annotate. I get to choose, do I want to be the only one to annotate or let others? Maybe only I want to annotate. And then I can draw on it. I can delete the annotations at any point. It's a bunch of different types you might want to play around with. And when I'm done with annotating, I'll click it again. That's computer audio, but this is how I stop presenting. And so if I only have one screen and I want to be able to pull up a PowerPoint, but also really be able to see the chat in a better way, in that case, I might want to just pull up the PowerPoint, say, from my computer or OneDrive. So I want to share, browse my computer. I can pull the same PowerPoint up, but now, in my case, I've already used it before, but I'll replace it. And now you can see it's going to display here for me instead. So now I can have chat open. I can go over to the people area and take a look. I can monitor that. If the students have their webcam, I'd be able to see them. I get to see the notes if I have it on the presentation. I can use the annotation features to maybe emphasize, hey, by the way, look at this poorly misspelled word. And I can go to the next slide either by that or by using the arrows. It is worth noting students can be by default navigating these slides as well, but if you choose private view near the top, that would prevent them and they would only be able to follow along with you. So a couple different ways of presenting. And again, if you want, you can pop it out, which means the PowerPoint goes out here on its own. Again, probably more useful if you're doing two screens though, but hopefully this gives you a few options.